everything you're sharing to me just sounds like a made-up story. Like I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, it's just, it sounds like a horror movie. You are listening to the Roberta Glass True Crime Report, putting the true back in true crime. From New York City, Roberta Glass is now on the record. Okay, how is everybody? Wanted to talk to you today about Kevin Frankie. Now, he's the estranged husband of Ruby Frankie, who pled guilty. Four counts in connection of her treatment of her children. One of the most horrific stories we've seen. And last time we were talking, we were looking at Ruby Frankie's arrest, Ruby Frankie's defiant, silent police arrest and police interrogation that never was really. And I shared that I felt that she was really a very dangerous woman, very deceptive woman. And a highly narcissistic woman. So before I get into Kevin Frankie's police interview now, just to give you a little background, he had been kicked out of the home about a year prior. He is completely absent in Ruby Frankie's journals. However... The neighbors were really concerned with the treatment that the children were going through at the hands of her mother and her life coach partner, business partner, although she denied it in her sentencing, but it seems pretty clear that they had some kind of deal going. Whether they were getting paid or not, there was almost like a marriage between those two women. They were living together at the time of both of their arrests. So he had really been kicked out of the home, but the neighbors were concerned. Her relatives were concerned. But Kevin Frankie seems to be totally shocked in his first police interview by what he's hearing. And he refuses to answer a really crucial question, which is, how did you discipline your children? So before I get into that, I'm going to look at your comments from last episode. Mad Marcia says, Ruby already had a lot of quote unquote deception about child rearing before Jody got a hold of her. Yeah. That's something I did mention last episode that she had a lot of really very wild ideas before she really got under the influence of Jody, but Jody's influence can be felt. I think that, I mean, I've been thinking about how, dangerous the combination of the, these two women were i think they're i think jody's dangerous uh, by herself i think ruby's dangerous but the two of them it's it, i think would i would describe as deadly combination of personalities and really 
goading each other on and seeming to really enjoy these feeling of power and control over the children. And it's very interesting that they seem to really target the youngest children. So where they can obviously have the most influence, it seems like they kept them out of school. Obviously, both of them uh, come with a Mormon background. So very controversial religion. Lisa Lucas says, 2614 says, okay, so Ruby Frankie in her sentencing hearing said, I prefer, uh, my preference is a, pr a prison sentence. And like she chose it. So the reason you take a plea deal is not because you're dying to go to prison and take responsibility. That's the way she spun it. And she acted in that speech like she was winning something, thanking everyone, aligning herself with the police, aligning herself with the good guys. So Lisa Lucas says, right, she prefers a prison sentence. Not that she made a plea deal to get the least amount of time possible. No, the narcissistic monster she is won't allow her to admit she no longer has any say in what happens. Honey, you're prison bound no matter what you want. Right. Great comment, Lisa. It's like, I chose this. I'm still in control. I'm still in control of the courtroom. The way she grandstanded was amazing. I'm the star look how amazing I am, look how strong I am, look how accountable I am. I mean, she really makes your blood run cold, this woman. So, I'm a unicorn, says, facing prison and public outrage will bring you to stark realizations. No Crap, my words, not I'm a unicorn, Ruby. The distancing and minimizing language used here when referencing her heinous crimes, followed by words and phrases, phrasing, excuse me, chosen to both refrain and elevate her status to those in the courtroom is insidious, insidious, excuse me. Ruby is still the controlling one to the very end. Yep. Cloaking herself in self-victimization and ultimately religious redemption. Her continued defiance is this acceptance speech. Step aside, counsel. Let's all marvel at her. I hope Ruby serves every single minute of her prison sentence. R and E, meaning her children, are deserving of nothing less couldn't agree with you more. I'm a unicorn replay crew tonight. Oh, I love my replay crew. I'm glad to hear you're feeling better, Roberta. Thank you for continuing to shine your intelligent, bright, and unflinching light. Thank you for those very, on these cases, you're a treasure. Thank you for those very kind and complimentary words. Really appreciate it. Great comment. So, Let me take, let me get, let's get into this. So it starts out with Kevin Frankie and them telling him what he found. Some of it, I, some of it has been edited out for privacy for the kids. Some of it I edited out. It's a constant struggle on this channel to keep things monetize and talk about crime in a real way. So, so I am under Miranda rights before we start. We're just going to kind of ask you a few questions about your involvement. Okay. So first you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you in the court of law. Okay. You have the right to an attorney or to have him or her present while questioning. If you cannot afford to hire one, one will be a for, or, um, hired to represent you. If you decide to answer questions, you can stop at any time, okay? 
Do you understand your rights? Uh, I do. Okay. Do you wish to speak to me now? Uh, well, I want to pick up my kids. How about this? We're going to ask you some questions, and if you don't want to answer them, you just say, hey, man, I'm not going to answer that. Sure. So these police officers are like, uh, sorry, dude, we, we, we have no plans. <laughs> There's no plans to hand those kids back to you. And he, you'll see in this that he was under Jody's care, too, and he's very complimentary. Apparently, he changes his story next interview. So I'm going to take everything one at a time when I can. So starting today on the first interview, if there's interest, I can do the second one if it's out and available. But this, he's, I just am having a hard time accepting that he knows nothing. And just, just say, hey, I'm not going to talk. That's not beneficial to you. And then we're done. We're here nowhere. And we're nowhere. And sure. You understand that, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So just for starters, what was your full name? Kevin William Frankie. How does that? K-E-V-I-N-W-I-L-L-I-A-M-F-R-A-N-K-E. And what's your date birth? What's a good address for you? Uh, my, well, I, I'm not comfortable giving my address right now. Okay. But you do so live in Springville? I do. How long have you lived in Springville for? So very much the same kind of paranoia around police officers that Ruby Frankie talked about. Not a lot of trust. So what, you know, the way I look at this is... I look at this from a perspective of a kind of cult. And I think that Jody knew that Ruby was really capable of some very, very dark things. And I think Ruby and Jody both knew that Kevin could be manipulated, could be shamed, could be controlled. And he was very happy to hand over the responsibilities to his wife and not protect his children. Really shameful. Um, I moved there in 2007 with my family. So okay. was and how many, 17 years. 17. And how many kids do you have, Kevin? I have six kids. And what are their names? So a little interesting thing about Mormons is that they really believe in big families and they do a lot of work with genealogy and they believe that in heaven, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mormons, this is just what I've heard, is that your family has its own planet so that you're populating your own planet in heaven with all these children and, re you know, family. Family is very much centered. Also, as I said in the last episode, appearance is really stressed. They know that the public, I don't know, there's some stigma on that religion. And so they try to look as beautiful as possible as well kept as possible, well dressed as possible, very much aware that they're being judged in order to present well for their religion, Scientology, it's the same kind of thing. Utah has one of the highest rates of plastic surgery in the country. So I guess he's giving uh, his personal information and they're gonna just keep this keep the sound down while he shares all the details about his kids here but you can watch in disbelief in the beginning he's speaking very highly of his wife and he really was sent uh, away yeah, some of our teenagers. so he was sent away to work on his issue 
with, and I'm going to be speaking in euphemisms tonight, please excuse, with adult material, online material. Apparently that was a favorite of Jody Hildebrandt's is to accuse everyone of having this one problem with adult material. And she led groups that really sounded a lot like the Synanon treatment and the troubled teen industries treatment where people were really shamed and ridiculed in support groups sounded very much like it came from that if you don't know my if you if you're not familiar with the troubled teen industry i've done quite a few episodes on it but it really is all modeled on charles dietrich and what was one of the first communities for people trying to get better with their issues with substances. And it became a really dangerous cult. The rumor is that the song Hotel California is about Synanon. And they would keep people up. A lot of musicians were in Synanon. They had a great band. They had businesses. They were incredibly rich and incredibly powerful. And if you want to read a great book, read Paul Morantz's book, who really worked very hard to bring it down. It, it got more and more dangerous at the end. You know, if you've ever heard the snake in the mailbox cult, that's what they did. They So Paul Morantz was a lawyer working on getting people out of Synanon, their relatives out of Synanon. And they put a rattlesnake, and it was Lance Keaton's son, the band leader's son, Oh, Stan Keaton's son, Lance, who was one of the two men who put the rattlesnake de-rattled in his mailbox. He reached in and got bitten, and he suffered his whole life with the effects of that. Paul Morantz, the lawyer, did, who worked hard to take Sinan on down. Incredible memoir. He just died a few years ago. Incredible person. So are they all living with you, or? No. I haven't seen them for over a year. Any of them? No. None of them. For a year? Over a year. Okay. I've been in a separation. From who? From my wife and family. What's your wife's name? Ruby. Ruby? When was the last time you saw Ruby? The last time I saw her yeah. was... Um, the 18th of, of this month, we met to, she requested me to sign over vehicles, or the titles to the vehicles, the vehicle that she drives that were all in my name. When's the last time you physically saw me? So he's saying that he hasn't seen his kids in a year, but... I find this very odd that he, he's not hearing anything in the small community about them. The neighbors are worried. People online were worried when they when Ruby Frankie had her eight passengers channels. They were worried, but he wasn't worried living in the home, knowing what she had to know what his wife was capable of. So in some ways, he had to go along with this. But again, we see a kind of passing the buck. So Jody says, blame society. Nothing I did was wrong. Everybody's too soft. Ruby Frankie said, I fell into a pigsty. I rolled around in the mud, meaning I got in with Jody and fell under her influence, which we know is not true. We know that she was doing things that were really wrong in, co in connection with raising your children before this. And now Kevin, her husband, saying, well, I was out of the home. I didn't know anything. It was just my job to send money as if they were a adopt a family across the world or something. I just sent money to them. Adopt a child. <laughs> I, I got pictures. And you wonder, how do you keep tabs? He's like, I just want to see your kids. You haven't seen them in a year. And now you want to see them now that the police are involved? 
heart it's just a little far-fetched um the day that i moved out july 24th 2022 24th of 2022 or july 25th july, july 25th so it's my understanding that that at least home here in, in Kanta and Ivan's. Have you been to that home? No. You've not been to that home? Uh, no, I don't know. Do I don't know, know what's anything that's been going on. Like, this is good, man. Like, I would love to be able to help you out with this, and like, I'm seeing the light of me. Mm -hmm. So the police are pretty angry at this time. I, I don't, I would love to interview them and see what their perspective is and when they go into an interview like this. How do they stay relatable? How do they pull out information? How do they get someone like this to open up when obviously you'll hear it in their voices? They're obviously so frustrated, so angry. I'm unaware of your involvement in, in what's really going on. So for you to say that you're unaware of the status of your kids kind of makes, I know that sounds kind of crummy to you, but it sounds kind of good to me. Like, who lives in that home with your, is it ex-wife? Is it currently a separated wife? Like, who lives in that home with your children? To be honest, I don't know. I, I know that she's there with um, four of the children and our two older children so we know that Ruby Frankie picked this home because it was so isolated. And that was one of the appeals when she and Jody moved. She wrote in her diary, we're going to be in the middle of the desert. It's you know going to be so isolated. So she was looking forward to the isolation, meaning less eyes on us because she had already had online petitions. She'd already had her YouTube channels taken down. Your home in Springville. Uh, and I'm not trying to where, trip you up. I can see you're hesitant to talk to me. I understand that. Well, where where I live? No, yeah. I haven't seen that for over a year. Okay. That's tough. I can only imagine how that feels, man. I got kids. And not seen him for that long, that, that would tear a little piece of my heart out. Of age to drive. Does she drive? I don't know. Okay. Like I said, I don't, I don't know nothing that's going on so, in their lives or anything going on. How did you find out that you needed to come here to 55 North Main Street? I received a message that I needed to come pick up my kids from the police department in Highlands. And who was that message from? Uh, well, I prefer not to say it right now. It would just help us a lot. I'm trying to figure out who reached out to you because it makes sense that that would happen. I'm just not aware of anyone who did that from our department. Right. And, and I'm not comfortable saying right now who reached out to me. Okay. Okay. I would, if I had to guess, I would guess that would be Jody or Ruby. And you can see he's protecting them in the beginning of this. So you haven't seen any of your kids in over a year, you said? That's correct. And then how old last time you saw her? How old is she now? 15. She's 16? Okay. And then when all the kids left, Ruby took all of them? Um, yeah, she stayed in the house and I moved up. Okay. And did you ever try to reach out to the kids, drop by the home, or no. was there? I honored the no separation boundary that we agreed. Well, isn't that convenient for him? All I have to do is send money. I'm honoring the agreement. I'm being an honorable man. And I'm sure that he got an earful of Jody's ideology and thought he was doing right but this is the kind of man my father used to call a capon <laughs> okay unreal 
unreal. He wants to pick up the kids with no question. Like he's like, can you just hand over the kids? Can we get through all this uh, nonsense about where I live and what's going on? Can you just hand me over my kids? I'd like to see them now that it's been a year and I've had nothing to do with them. And I don't know anything. I mean, he really wants to hammer on the fact that he knows nothing. And I find that hard to believe. So what was your separation? Did you have a no contact order in place? No, this was between my wife and I. So what did Ruby ask of you when you separated? What did she ask of me? Did she ask you not to contact the kids? Ruby invited me to leave the home. Mm Mm-hmm. While I um, thought about the, the choices that I've made in my life. I love that. So this is something that can get really dangerous when these kind of personalities like Jody armor themselves with the language of our health profession so he was invited he wasn't kicked out he wasn't asked to leave he wasn't booted from the home he was invited to leave guys he, that was an he had an invitation that he could have refused to leave the home i mean what are we talking about here i was invited to leave and never come back as a way to honor my relationship honor my relationship and let my wife live like a married couple with her life coaching business partner. (laughs) And I know she denies it, but come on. I mean, I wonder what this guy thinks about this now. I mean, I think he could have filed in the courts to see his kids. I mean, not interested, no interest. Like, oh, I just have six kids. They're I don't know what they're up to. I haven't seen them in a year. And you never heard anything, never heard from the relatives who were trying to get in touch with the Ruby. But all this stuff about accepting responsibility and honoring commitments and authenticity is just gobbledygook and a means to an end to control so scary that when you're getting help from someone who's so dangerous and you seem to have a total lack of moral compass yourself these poor kids the way that I've treated her okay and so I left and how long had you and Ruby been married before we were married in 2000 so about 22 years? Uh, when we separated, we were going on 22 years. Yes. Okay. And during your marriage, how was, how was disciplining your kids? How would you discipline your kids? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay, that's fine. No. Have you been... There it is, right there. Right there. He's not going to answer. Because he's got to know that that he's going to be judged. So I talked about in the last episode, there's just a brief moment when Ruby Frankie's getting arrested where they're putting the handcuffs on her and she puts her hands down. It's like reality comes into her head. She knows she's being judged and she knows she's being judged as a monster. Same thing here. This guy is slowly reality seeping into into the ideology and the fantasy that's all, that he's been living and built for whatever reason that he he you know like I said before in last episode these people seem to know what people are capable of I believe Jody knew that he would look the other way he wasn't capable of really standing up to her or or doing what was right by the kids and that was very probably very appealing for her that she could manipulate him and he would be okay with it i think he i don't know if he ever had a moral compass i don't know 
you know, it's hard to tell what's really going on in this. But the fact that he won't say how he disciplined his kids is a big red flag for me. Has been separated her since they lived here in the city of Ivins. Um, have you communicated with your wife regarding like discipline with your kids or their care or their physical well-being? No. So is she doing this on her own and just telling you how your kids are? She's not telling me anything about the kids. Who's this? Who's this uh, female Jody that your wife lives with? Do you, do you know a female named Jody? She is a, a therapist and a life coach, I know, and she's... Do you respect her? Uh, do I respect her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she's a very honest, truthful person, yes. Okay. You place value on Jody? I don't know what that means. Okay. So either he's incredibly naive, or he's under the spell, or both. But I find it so interesting that he couldn't feel danger. He couldn't, he had no sense how dangerous. He seems to just want to go along with anything that his wife wanted. And very weak. Very weak man. And I believe he still hasn't gotten his youngest kids back. I've, what I've read is that they're still in the care of our protection services, CFS. Do you, do you, do you value what she says and, and how she treats? Is your wife a client of hers? Is your wife a partner of hers? Is your wife a roommate with her? If your kids are living in her house is what I'm trying to say. I'm not aware of that, but I know that they've been in business for the last year filming. Who's they? Ruby and Jody. They Ruby film. And Jody, they business. film podcasts, and so every week a podcast goes up, and I listen to it. And <laughs> What's the name of it? Uh, connections with it. So apparently, there was a lot of red flags in those podcasts. But he's, now he's been reduced from being a star in her, YouTube ser in her YouTube channel to invited to leave the home, and now he's just listening like a fan. And he's okay with it. I mean, and this, uh, I, I, all I can think is that this must have given them immense pleasure to feel so much control. The, you know, Jody and Ruby can set, set the set, the rules, and he'll just obey them blindly, not and not question, not ask questions, go along with it. And apparently, Jody's favorite thing to do was to accuse people of having the same problem he says he has, even if they've never looked at online adult material ever. They are, they're all, they're all out of control and need, and need group counseling for it. So that's what he said. He, he'll talk about being in spaces with Jody, spaces with Jody. X. Like C-O-N. C-O-N-N-E-X-I-O-N-S. Yeah. And now I do support them in that role in doing that and having... Do I support them in the business? Yeah, like do you, do you support them and think that what they're doing is a good thing or? Yeah, I support their business efforts. I think it's a good thing. Are you involved with their business efforts or? No. Okay. So just Ruby and Jody? No okay. In the business? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And were you involved in the eight passengers account with your family? Um, yes. I was in the videos and that's what you mean. I briefly learned about this two hours ago. <laughs> so, did Ruby more so do the videos for the family? Mm -hmm. And how long did you guys do that for? Uh, she started the channel in 2015. And as far as, as I'm aware, from the time I left, 
the last video she uploaded was towards the end of 2021. Okay. And I, but I, again, I'm not aware of anything she's done since our separation. I don't. Wait, what does he mean he's not aware of anything she's done? Didn't he just say he listens to Connections, the podcast, and that he, she's in business? Is that a con? I, that seems like a contradiction to me. Seems very aware of what she's up to. Even peeping in from the outside, if that's all it is. Don't visit a passengers anymore. <laughs> chapter of your life that's gone. It, it, it's a past chapter, yeah. So how do you and Ruby communicate? Just through text, phone call? Through text, and if there's anything considered an emergency, we agree that we would communicate through a phone call. Okay, and do you know her phone number off the top of your head? Off uh, the top of my head? Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, no worries. So, how often would you guys communicate while she was down here? Well, I don't know how often or long she was down here. We've communicated maybe four times in 2023 since January. So are you aware of how she disciplines the kids or how she handles you know, it's awfully convenient to just say, I don't know anything, haven't seen them in a year. Not going to tell you how I deal with my kids. Not going to tell you how, why I'm down here, who told me. Everybody saved themselves. And it's very interesting that they both took plea deals. Brooklyn Janet, thanks. He's a moral lacking, a moral sense. Yeah, agree with you unconcerned with the righteousness, rightness, excuse me, or wrongness of something. Yeah, great point. It's also vague. Right on, Brooklyn Janet. Yeah. So what I'm getting, I just find this hard to believe. It's awfully convenient now. You know, how can the neighbors be so aware and they, and they were so happy that the children were still around when the police came. They thought it would be much worse. No. The kids with behavioral issues or anything like that? No. So you're, you're unaware of how she does that? Yes. Okay. Are you aware of the physical condition of your children? No. No, I'm... I've chosen to trust my wife with the children. That was part of the agreement of our separation. Is that you allow her to physically provide for the needs of the child and you're just removed from that? I mean, you pay support. I know this is personal questions, but... No, yes, my job is to financially provide for the I'm just trying to figure out like, how, how much of a role do you play in the caretaking of specifically of those two kids? I I pay the bills. Okay. So with my, my job, I provide the money, goes into a shared bank account, and that's my only involvement. Okay. Um, like, there's a whole bunch of things that I want to talk to you about, but I, I still can't get over the fact that someone notified you to come here to pick up your kids. My guess is, was that, was that uh, Jody? No, I'm not going to answer that question. Okay. All, all I'll say is... Well, you, someone you said you trusted her. her. You said that you think she's... Not as, I asked you if you placed value on her, but you, you obviously... She is an honest... I know her to be an honest and a trustworthy individual. And so, yeah, I trust her. And um, I received a communication that and so I left immediately from my job and drove down here. That's all I know. I've come to pick up my kids and to take them home with me. 
Do you have any, is there a custodial paperwork that says that you're like a, there's, there's no custodial paperwork denying you of rights, correct? Uh, there's no custodial paperwork at all. Period. So the kids are, are yours. They are mine. Okay. Me, yes. We, this was an, just a verbal agreement between my wife and I when we said mm -hmm. last year. Well, what questions do you have? Oh, well, I want to know what's going on and why I was asked to come down and pick up my two kids. Well, and then a lot of that kind of hinges on who asks you because if we had been the one, like, I'm, I'm not going to say you fit, but I'm, I'm confident a cop didn't call you because we wouldn't have wanted you down here at this point in our investigation. So, having said that, I, I think it's time we, we'd be honest with you, right? Sure. No. So, there's something very zombie like about his police interview very disconnected, very emotionally disconnected. I'm just here to pick up my kids. I'm not going to tell you anything. She's very good, trustworthy, almost like a robot, don't compute, unemotional, distant, robotic. And this is where the police push forward and tell, and tell them how they found the kids and what in the condition. And I didn't lie. You're sure, someone contacted me, but I don't want to you say said without someone a, from your office. But okay. Uh, well, I don't recall saying someone from my office. Our office. I I didn't lie. Okay. So there's an admission in the negative there. Anytime you hear a speech in the negative telling you what they didn't do, your ears should prick. No. Someone, yeah, so we don't know who called you. So if we knew who called you, then we could help you. It would make more sense. But... Well, I don't know the legal ramifications of implicating individuals who contacted me. And so without a lawyer here, I don't want to answer that question. That's okay. But you're, you want to know specifics of the case, which we can't share right now because it's under investigation. So... I see. Yeah, so we would like to ask questions about where you found out, but we'll respect that if you don't want to share that information. But I am curious, when you guys had the previous 8 Passengers YouTube channel, you guys got a lot of heat for neglect and child abuse. A lot of people commented those things on there. Why were they commenting those things? That's a good question. Um, we, uh, we had a son who was acting out in very selfish behavior and you know none of this is strange or odd you could get on youtube and find out all sorts of stuff on this it's like a double-edged sword guys the question is what do you believe right there yeah. there was even an article written in um newsweek magazine in 2020 on it and or news was it newsweek so he's in awe of his wife. I mean, it's very difficult to build that kind of giant YouTube channel. Two and a half. Very few people get to two and a half million viewers. And what I've noticed is the biggest personalities, sometimes the most manipulative and immoral people seem to rise to the top of YouTube because they're such manipulators and their behavior is so outrageous that people want to watch. It's provocative uh, material. A business insider where we were interviewed and, and we were pretty straightforward and we talked about it and we shared our piece in that. Basically it boils down to he was being um, very cruel and mean to his siblings that he shared a room with and so we removed him from the room and we said you can sleep anywhere you want sleep on the couch sleep on the he was invited to leave his room and invited not to have a bedroom guys and it's very interesting wouldn't you think if this is true if any of this is at all true wouldn't you think that this 
would be a reaction to the kind of environment that his mother and father set up where this kind of uh, really loveless, it's so interesting to see Jody's home absolutely devoid of any kind of personality, any kind of love, any kind of human element, uh, personality, pictures of the kids, pictures, kids' drawings, kids' clothes. It looked like a rented show house. And he sang, oh, the kid was terrible, and we invited him. We told him, we gave him his pick of the rest of the house to sleep in. But I believe he was sleeping on the floor. Pull out bed. Sleep on the floor for all we care, but you're not sleeping in that room with your brother. So wouldn't you think that if you had your choice between a couch and the floor, you would sleep on the couch? So I call uh, BS with this. I think he was invited to sleep on the floor. And you can see in those clips, there are still out there. They're still around. Ruby Frankie seems really delighted and is just sort of beaming when her son is talking about how he was punished. I'm gonna take a quickie break. When we get back, we're gonna watch a little bit more of this. There's not, it's not super long. I think we're almost about halfway through, but you can see, you'll see where it's going. Spoiler alert, it's, he's gonna break basically. And any kind of loyalty that he has with his wife quickly gets, I don't know if it's just to save himself or what. Jackie C says so many, thank you, so many young kids and teens watch their channel at the peak of the popularity. Great point. I wonder how they perceived it. Pretty interesting, right? Do they perceive it? I mean, they look, they, I mean, Ruby Frankie's a, a decent looking woman. The children were very beautiful. And they presented themselves like the all American family. And it seems like the bigger your family is, the more the public is fascinated with it, fascinated by these big families on YouTube. Certainly that's a, I think any mother that's using her kid for content, I don't know. I don't think it's very healthy for the kid or, or, or for the mother. I'm going to take a quick 36 minutes, 36 second break. When I get back the rest of Kevin Frankie's interview, don't go anywhere. Meet you on the other side of the break. If you are enjoying this episode of My True Crime Report, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share this episode. Get access to exclusive podcasts and other bonus content by becoming a patron today. If you have a question or comment for me, shoot me a super chat and I'll do my best to answer it and read it on air. Thanks so much. Now back to the show. Okay. All right. Back to Kevin Frankie's interrogation. Uh, he chose to sleep on a beanbag. So nine months later, he had made a lot of changes in his life. And he was ready to, and, and we had moved by that time. And so we had a new house and he was ready to move into his own bedroom. Made a video about it. And in the video, he mentioned something of the effect of, I've been sleeping for nine months on a beanbag. And that is what all the uproar was about. What did you guys do to help? That, that is untrue. It was also about her six-year-old child forgetting to pack a lunch. 
And the teacher being concerned that this six-year-old, first of all, to put the responsibility for a six-year-old, I know that I was given the responsibility to pack my own lunches, maybe 11 or 12 in addition to doing my own laundry, around 11 or 12 years old in my house. And I'll tell you, as an 11 or 12-year-old, with all the extracurricular activities that kids do, it wasn't always the easiest. And to put that on a six-year-old seems ridiculous that to think that she's not going to remember to to make her own lunch and really expecting children to act like adults at six is ridiculous. Of course, he's not going to mention it because it doesn't make him look great. So, yeah, it's all, it's not about the bean bag, uh, sleeping on a bean bag and having no bedroom. And one of the things they do when you want to adopt or foster a kid is they make sure you have a bedroom for them. So somewhere for your kid to lay their head and have some feeling of safety and privacy. Like with his behavioral issues, is that, is that something you and Ruby talked about together? Is, mm -hmm. And then did you... discover yourself and fix behavioral issues and things like that. Is, that. is that something you and Ruby sought out to help correct, like some of the things? Yes, and, okay. and I supported it. And so together we held boundaries for our son to support. See again, the language of the self-help movement or the psychology movement. We set boundaries. We're trying to get them to take accountability, responsibility. So all that language is all very loaded language used to weaponize against their children. Or is choosing honest and responsible choices. And when he chose honest and responsible choices consistently is when he began to get his privileges back. And that was that was, that was the other word, right? Yeah. And, and so, um, but yes, um, through 2000. Contact separation boundary with, uh, that I agreed to with my wife, but I understand that he's um, 18, living on his own somewhere in Provo and working and supporting himself. What other kids went down to visit Jody? What other kids? Yeah, did you send any of the other kids down? One of the weirdest parts of the story is that some of the children were found cleaning for friends. And these friends keep saying, obviously someone connected with Jody were saying, oh, we have friends from, is, am I right, South America, something like that, house guests from South America visiting, and here is Ruby's children cleaning their house, and these friends said over and over again, we took them out for ice cream, as if that makes it okay, as if this free labor, we, we paid an ice cream, <laughs> is okay. It was so odd, and in Ruby's sentencing, she says, don't blame them. They didn't know anything. I believe she's talking about that couple. But boy, did they not come off well. And I don't believe that they've given any interviews since to share their side of the story. So it makes me think that they were involved in Jody's world somehow and approved of all of this kind of nonsense with the children, the absolute horrors that they put them through. But we bought them ice cream, so it was okay. I mean, they had to see that everybody could see what these children looked like. Other people were concerned, yet the father doesn't know, the father doesn't hear anything. He knows nothing, hasn't been around, but he's listening to Jody and Ruby's 
podcasts every week, which I hear had a million red flags in them. So it's a very weird interview. So on one hand, he knows that he's being judged. He knows he's going to protect himself like all of them did. He knows that society looks down on this behavior. And at the same time, he's saying outwardly that I can't wait to get my kids back. Well, what a time to want your kids back at the time that you have to pick them up from a police station. And he, he, they weren't, hand, the police are smart. They're not handing over their kids to this guy. It's very telling that he's not, some of the kids have aged out and are adults now and living on their own, but others are in the, the care of the state. Oh, we didn't, sit, we didn't sit down to spend time with Jody. They would meet on Zoom. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, we so were in Springfield. Uh -huh. Well, even in 2019, we would, she would meet with us. So when did Ruth... Who's bringing up the Mormon church in the comments? I just want to pull it up. Because that's a really... Lolly. Mormon love to teach obedience and sacrifice, Lolly77. Thanks. Yeah. And where was the Mormon, what do you call them, a minister? And I'm sorry, I'm not familiar. Elder. I know that you have elders, I believe. But is a bishop? I'm not sure. I'm not sure the language, but was invited over to bless the house, bless the children. Where's the Mormon church's part in this story? And that's something I haven't heard a lot of people ask. Because what I've seen in these kind of cases is that when it all comes out, no one knows anything. No one saw anything. And Jody and Ruby were just so isolated. But my experience on planet Earth is not that. People know things. People sense things. Apparently the little girl was going over to the neighbors and wasn't in school, was asking to play with the neighbor's kids. And the neighbors are like, oh, you got to wait till they come home from school. She would say, I I'll wait. And the kids were very upset that they didn't have friends. So what? where's the church's responsibility in all this? Me and Jody, to your knowledge, like decided to collaborate, come together and mesh lives because that's what it's, that's what's happened. Well, the, they decided to start a business in 2021. So while you, while you and Ruby were together? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, but there were, you know, at that period it was pretty nebulous. I, I don't know. What's that yeah. word mean? <laughs> it, was, it was just a lot of talk and, and everyone like solid plans. It was, let's start by, you know, doing podcasts together. And, and then that's all I know. I know that uh, they... That's interesting. He's using the word nebulous. But wasn't there, and I'm trying to think of the word. Let me know in the chat if you know the word. But didn't he say, what does that mean? I think it was something like, oh, do you... Do you ascribe value to Jody? I think they asked him that. And he was like, I don't know what that means. And then he's using the word nebulous, meaning shape, shapeless, hard to, hard to define. Blob-like is something I think of the word nebulous. Like, I, I don't know if that is exactly, that's how I think of it. I'd have to look at the exact dictionary definition, but using that word, but he doesn't understand what ascribe value means. I published a book together recently. You can find it on Amazon. It's not a secret. Um, was business thriving, like life was good between those two? Uh, well, not that I was aware. Well, at some point, and again, I'm not digging into your life, but I'm trying to understand this at some point. We took, they kick you well, out? when you talk about a business, you know, thriving uh -huh. in terms of business and money, when, when we stopped 
eight passengers on YouTube, we lost 90% of our income. So to say that business was thriving, uh, in my perspective, no. Got it. I don't think it ever was after was, that. Was that part of your guys' reason for separation after you guys ended eight passengers? Uh, was that part of the reason? Mm -hmm. um, I, the, the reasons are because of, of ways that I treated my wife and, um, and some um, of my own addictions that I was working through and seeking help on with, um, with uh, Thank you for sharing that. And I, yeah, I've made some wonderful progress. Like, is that something you came to the realization that you needed help and weren't doing things right? Or is that something that, like, Jody helped you guys recognize that maybe Ruby needed? See, a great question by the police. Meaning, is this an, a problem you really thought you had? Or is this an idea that Jody put in your head? More, I'm trying to understand her involvement in your guys' life. Um, She's my focus, so just to be honest. I understand, and I, I can perceive that. Um, Jody and Ruby have a, um, a close relationship, and, and Jody saw the need for me to get help. And um, frankly, I agree. I, the space um, has been exactly what I need to face you know, my own um, addictions and, and receive the support and help that I've needed. And so the space has been um, very, very good for me. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, stated that you and Ruby had this no contact that you guys just verbally agreed upon, was that an idea given by Jody that she recommended you guys have that? How much do you want to bet that he, as he, long as he was in this group and staying away? Because Jody seems to me to really have latched on to Ruby and vice versa. And as long as he stayed away and stayed under her control, he was praised and praised for his progress and really love bombed. As long as he's doing the right thing and staying away and honoring his commitments. What I find so scary about this is his just total acceptance of it, his total lack of critical thinking, his total lack of emotion. I don't even, I don't even think he's fearful here. He just seems like very robotic. And it seems like all the thinking, the Jody induced cult thinking is going on in his head over and over and over again. And he's going to spit it out because that's how he knows he's doing well. If he's taking accountability, stepping up to the plate, honoring his responsibilities. And he's, and he'll talk about how he honors his responsibilities, which is basically send money as a father. Face and not contact one another. I'm not aware of that. It, the, the invitation for me to leave and take space was from my wife. Okay. But that was while Jody and Ruby were friends and collaborating and doing podcasts and sure. Well, you're the, you're the, the invitation to leave and separate from his wife was an offer he couldn't refuse. <laughs> I mean, this is like the Godfather. Yeah, controlling, who said that? Controlling through guilt. Great comment. Yeah, absolutely. Controlling through guilt. And basically had a white, uh, his wife's business partner just came into the house and took over his role. The custodial parent of teacher, I don't see why we can't explain to you what, why we're involved. So I don't recall the exact time, but sometime before 11 o'clock today, 
we received uh, a phone call from 911 on our dispatch that uh, a 12 to 13 year old boy was knocking on doors in a neighborhood asking for food and water, that he was severely emaciated, that he had was emaciated, mean? skinny, scrawny, uh, malnutritioned, not enough food, not enough water to sustain life. So he knows what that means. He's just saying, what is your version of that? So very narcissistic. My kids were attractive and slim. What are you calling that? That's really what he means. He's using nebulous, but he doesn't know what emaciated means. Come on. So he had, I'm sorry, what? He had on his extremities, on his hands, on his ankles, and those were covering a rope that were used to down. Take a second and think about what I just said. That's the condition of your son. Given that information, your son was taken to the hospital. A warrant has been applied and granted by the Department of Child and Family Services to remove both from your wife's care. So no one right now is going to have access to these two children based on their physical condition. Do you understand that? I understand. Do you, would you condone that behavior? Would I condone that behavior? Um, That's my job. My job is to find out your knowledge of the treatment of these, these based precious on children. No. I bet, again, I don't know the details or I don't know what's going on, but as you described that, that sounds horrible, horrible, disgusting. No human being should be treated like that. I, yeah, okay. That's my thoughts, but again, we might be different on that. Um. So, so you can hear the police officers not really believing him. No one should be treated like that, but that's my thoughts. I don't know what your thoughts are. Hard to tell where you're at on this. You love Jody. You think she's a great person. You handing over all control, and then you say you don't know anything. But you also say you don't know what I just described to you means. You know, it, it's like, what does that mean to be asking for food and water and to look and to look unwell? What does that mean? What are you describing that at? So reality is coming rushing in where you realize that everything that you've built your life around and your choices might be wrong, might be bad. And he seems also very narcissistic. He seemed to really love. So Jody has replaced him as the star now she's starring with Ruby in Connections, and he's been exiled. Eight Passengers is defunct, and that's how they were getting 90% of their income, and 90%. And we saw the property that they were on, huge. 2.5 million subscribers. She must have been making a lot of money on YouTube. A lot of money. We're going to sit here for a second, okay? We're going to go out and talk. Um, I'm not saying you're, you're still not free to go. Are you under arrest? Absolutely not. We just have lots of questions that we need to figure out. Lots. Okay? Uh, okay. Because... Your, your children are under medical care right now. And what does that mean? And it means that you don't have access to him. My understanding is that... So he's going to play deaf dumb and blind, and this seems to be a style with this guy. What does that mean? You just heard that you're not getting your kids back. No one's getting your kids back. They are, what is that? They're in the custody of DCFS. And they will be for the next seven? There's a medical hold on them right now. So for at least the next 72 hours, based on our understanding, 
at least the next seven days. During observation, they're, you're being watched. DCFS is going to provide you that information and they can better answer your questions along those lines. That's handled through them. Okay. So we'll be back. So I want you to think about some things, though. I don't know. I don't know. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. So listen to me. I want you to think about that for a minute. We don't know what he was asked to think about. A lot of this has been edited out, unfortunately. But he sits for a long time. I had to edit it out. I mean, quite a long time, putting his hand over his eyes, his hand over his mouth, looking distressed, not calling anyone. They warn him not to call anyone. And so I have no idea where they're at. Oh, I don't either. But, um... Okay, we're going to hop out here. We'll be back in a minute, okay? That's still recording audio and video, okay? So if you would, don't make any phone calls. Sure. What's going to happen with my wife? I love my wife. I don't know. I'm being honest with you. I don't know. Interesting. He, he doesn't say what's going to happen to my kids. Are they going to be okay? First thought is his wife. So right here you see that he's not doesn't really attach to his kids. A lot of fathers don't in this way. It's very primal with women. But with fathers, often not so much. His attachment is to his wife. He wants to protect his wife in a way that he never wanted to protect his kids. Haven't had any of you with you? I don't have those charges against my wife. Possibly. I think given the circumstances, that's highly appropriate. But again, I don't know your wife. I was hoping to gain some insight from you, but... I don't necessarily know that that's something you wanted to. I trust her. A road you wanted to travel down with me, so. I trust her. Bad move, buddy. Wrong move. Wrong move. Someone left an interesting comment who grew up, I believe, in Mormonism and said it really teaches us to trust authority. Be obedient. It's really in the religion. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, I mean, it's I don't know experientially whether that's true or not. But it's very interesting here that he still trusts his wife even after what he's been told. I mean, very slow to wake up. Not without legal representation. Yeah. All right. I get it. But I love that wife. And I trust that wife. And so, I mean, this feels like getting run over by a steam truck while you're sharing with me today. Yeah. You, I can tell you're caught off guard. I thought I was just coming here to pick up my kids. And for what, I don't know what or why, but... And I was planning on taking them back with me. And just... I mean, I'd love to have a candid conversation with you. I just don't know how it's going to be received by you. I don't know you, but I can tell you my perception of how this happened. Uh, well, I'm Whether interested you that or not, it's... Look, I'm interested in facts, but again, mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm, I'm... I'm interested in all the facts. But you understand our facts. Our facts are that you have a child that is emaciated malnutrition and has marks. I, I didn't spend any time with her. Sergeant Tobler did. Did any of you spend time with her? Uh, mm -hmm. she didn't spend time I, with her. I have not. She went to, today. she was requested to go to the hospital along with, based on their condition. Folks, I don't know what to do. Like, I want this. So this is, this is where reality comes flooding in. 
he realizes at some level it's not going to work anymore to say he doesn't know. Now he does know. And he's having a crisis of loyalties. Does he stay loyal to his wife or does he help the police and try to get back his children and also any semblance of respect from the public and his circle of friends and his local public. So here he, he's very conscious that he's being judged that what he was a part of is wrong. But I think when he had doubts, that's what he would tell himself. I trust my wife. I love my wife. It's very interesting that that's his mantra. I trust my wife. I love my wife. Trust in my wife with the children. You realize that I have a picture of my family on my wall. And I look at it every day. And I work. I work every day. Another self-serving narcissistic speech. You know who else looks, says he looks at the pictures of his family every day? Chris Watts. This angers me. <laughs> it really does anger me to watch this. You would think he would be saying, what do they need? Can I see them? Are they going to be okay? Okay. Instead, he's giving speeches about how much he cares and how he looks at pictures. And back to my family, and save my family. And everything you're sharing to me just sounds like a made-up story. Like I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like it's just—it sounds like a horror movie. I get it. I understand. And this is, this is my life. I Poor me. This is what I'm experiencing. But still, no word about what his children are experiencing. Dr. Zap, I pre pre uh, says, thanks for the super chat. I appreciate your handling of these cases and your commentary, Roberta. Thank you. Banana bread, <laughs> banana bread, banana bread all around. Jade's World, too, has a really funny, uh, or I thought it was funny, maybe because I did it, <laughs> maybe because it's my invitation. Little clip of my Donna stuff up on her channel. Banana bread, banana bread, banana bread. Yeah, thanks for a little comic relief. This is very heavy. Very heavy episode. Strangely heavier than the last episode. Interesting, right? And, and what he's saying is so surfacely benign. I don't know anything. Sounds like, oh, it's terrible. Sounds like a horror movie. It's what he's not saying. It's where his concern isn't. It isn't with the kids. They just seem like pawns, you know. It's like he had them for his wife or something. It's odd. Odd, odd, odd. I just want my kids. I just want my kids. I just want my family. I don't know what's going on. I, mean, I don't know why these things that you describe happen. I, I don't know. It's almost like I want to say, I, I'm sorry, you, you must have somebody else. Because the, the, 
Right. This doesn't fit into my worldview, my worldview of my wife, my worldview of Jody, my worldview of myself. And certainly having a YouTube channel with tons of fans making tons of money in the whole world, basically, except for a bunch of people who petitioned saying, you're, oh, you're doing great. You're perfect. You know, up to the end, they had to have loyal fans to keep that channel afloat. Could not have been all haters, all telling them they're wonderful parents, their family's wonderful, they're perfect. And look at the, look at how they're being viewed now. What a fall from grace, huh? But again, it's the same thing. I don't want to be judged. I, 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 I can't compute this. This is not my view of what happened. And boy, was he... If it's true, I don't think he was. I think anything that any kind of critical information got shut down. And I think Jody being so good at weaponizing language really got him in a very subservient state. It's like, am, am I in the right conference room here? Yeah. That's what I feel like. It's reality, you know. I'm having a hard time accepting this and dealing with this. I mean, you're telling me that you're taking my kids from me. But yeah. time. Like, we need to transfer the titles of the car to my name, you know, or um, we're going to cancel these credit cards and, and stuff like that. So just. Stuff related to the finances, really, is the, our, our only communications over the past year. Sure. We, we've had zero, like, zero communications regarding the kids. Okay. I've had no reason to believe or think that there was anything going on. For all of this... You never asked about your kids? Wouldn't you want to say, how's so-and-so doing? They didn't have any kind of activities that you would want to show up for. Were they that isolated? Did they not participate in any kind of school, any kind of school activities? Sounds like they're totally were homeschooled. Some purposes. I woke up this morning looking at the picture of my family and making my commitment today, as I do every day, that I'm going to live an honest, a virtuous, and a responsible life today okay. and what you're sharing with me just feels like a sucker punch so what he's saying is why am i doing why am i repeating jody's mantra when this is her version of honesty when this is her version of responsibility when this is her version of living authentically and, and stepping up to the plate and taking responsibility. Lands her a four to 30 year prison sentence. And I do think Ruby will manipulate her way out of prison before Jody, if I had to guess. I think she's highly, highly deceptive, highly manipulative. And where's the emotion? But maybe it'll come later. Apparently at the next one, he's willing to tell all. So it does take a little while to wake up. You know, I'm trying to be fair, but I, I'm, I'm not. I, this interview doesn't evoke a lot of respect for him in my eyes. Just imagine. Brianna, do you have questions? So. Okay. <laughs> if I still have a family. Yeah. And um I I just Right. And, um, I am 
just heartbroken what you all are sharing with me. And um, I just I feel like I feel responsible. It's yeah, Bingo, you me. are. You are responsible. You're the father. And you handed that over to a stranger, basically. Not even a relative, a stranger. It hurts. And the, uh, I wish I was a better husband. Not a better father. Better husband, not a better father. That's what's on his mind. Barb, now, man, thanks so much. If only we could get Donna, Wendy, and Charlie to be, be counseled by Jody and Ruby. <laughs> right? Can you imagine? Can you imagine any family counseling? You know, that would be Wendy. I can't make family counseling. My lawyer tells me we can't communicate while I'm communicating with you. This is not about the case, Wendy. It's not about the case. There is no more case. There is no more case, Wendy. I just want to show you a, a few things before I go on vacation. Wink, wink. You know, one of those normal one-way ticket type of vacations. <laughs> Can you imagine the counselor would just like quit it all? <laughs> just be like, what am I looking at with this family? Thanks so much, Dean Walker, for the super sticker. Appreciate it. Ah. Oh. So we're right at the end here. This is the end. He wants to be a better, a better husband, but not a better father. So the feeling is he failed his wife, not his kids. So he's mad that they're not, the police aren't just handing over the kids. He's angry that he's not getting the kids. That's what that means. I know you're all just doing your job, but I'm sitting here teed off that I'm not getting handed the kids after what I just heard. What a disconnect. Disconnect. Wild. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks. That means a lot. I just want my kids back. See, yep, there it is. I just want my kids back. I'm angry I'm not getting my kids back. The police just taste it on surface value. They're not getting it. He's saying, I'm angry. I'm sitting here angry. Because I can't be angry at my wife. I can't be angry at Jody. I can't go there. But I'll be angry at you. I'll be angry at the system that's victimizing me right now. So this is a theme in this in this. Uh, case. When things go down, they all claim victimhood. Every single one of them. I want my family back. Oh, my there it is. Bing, 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 bing. He wants his family back, but mainly his wife. See, right after that's his wife. I don't want this to sound rude, Kevin. We've got some things to do, but we're not kicking. So they kick him out here. They say, we're not kicking you out, but we, it's sort of like a bartender. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. 
So they kick him out. That is the end of the interrogation. Today I gave, um, if you're listening, oh, I'll circle back to that. If you are listening, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave me a five-star review. I'm off tomorrow. I gave a long interview on the Wake the Dead podcast all about Sheldon Johnson, the guest on the Joe Rogan show. He went on Joe Rogan to talk all about his work in the wrongful conviction movement and justice reform only to be arrested for shooting his neighbor. Awful, awful case. And just the whole innocence fraud phenomenon I was talking about for hours and hours. So that hopefully that'll be up on my channel soon. Please hit the like, subscribe. I'll see you Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern, back with another episode. Please leave me a comment. And have a great night, everybody.